Number 47. An oil gusher shoots crude oil 25 meters into the air through a pipe with a 0.1 meter diameter, neglecting air resistance but not the resistance of the pipe, and assuming laminar flow, calculate the gauge pressure at the entrance of the 50 meter long vertical pipe, uh, take the density of the oil to be 900 kilogram per cubic meter, and its viscosity is about one uh, pascal second. All right. And also note that you have to take into account the pressure due to the 50 uh, meter column of oil in the pipe. All right, so basically uh, they need us to calculate the pressure down here, okay? And not the absolute pressure, but the gauge pressure. All right, so this would best be done by breaking the problem up into two separate pieces, okay? And I've kind of done that uh, by detailing the heights over here, all right? So we have two parts. Basically, we have this kind of free fall part, all right, where we're talking about a certain fluid that's leaving a tube, all right? It's being shot out. And eventually this liquid is going to reach a, the oil that is, is going to reach a certain height of 25 meters above the ground, okay? And then the second part of the problem is basically going to be looking at the flow inside of this particular tube, okay? So why don't we first look at uh, the, we'll call it the, the top part here, all right, where the oil is being shot into the air. Now, for something like this, um, what we are after, uh, actually it's a little hard to know what we're after initially here. Now, I know we're trying to find the uh, gauge pressure down here, but there's pressure in a lot of different formulas, right? So I think it's best to try to, like I said, break this up into two parts and then see what this piece feels familiar to. Doesn't this piece feel familiar to those problems that we've done earlier in the chapter where we had to use Bernoulli's equation, right? And we had to, maybe, maybe we can calculate the velocity. Oh, maybe we can calculate the velocity of the oil leaving the tube, okay? And I can use that doing Bernoulli's equation, right? So remember, uh, the way we frame the problems prior in terms of the first part here, this is my final state, and this will be my initial state. Just after the oil leaves the tube, okay? Like at the nanosecond after, the picosecond, all right? So that being the case, I know that in terms of this equation over here, that the absolute pressures that those two points are experiencing P1 and P2 will be the same. They are both under atmospheric pressure, okay? Essentially, they're oil particles freely falling in air, all right? So they're both experiencing atmospheric pressure. Now, I know, right, the higher that you go up, the lower atmospheric pressure gets, but come on, guys, right? We're talking about 25 meters here. It's not going to be a big deal, all right? Although, technically, if you brought that up, you'd be correct. And if you want to do that calculation, by all means, go for it, all right? Uh, but here, we're going to cancel them because it's going to lead to a negligible uh, change. Now what we also realize is in terms of the final value up here, and it doesn't matter if you call you know the subscript 1 the final or subscript 2 the final, who cares? But we know that the velocity you know of the particle, the oil particle at the top there is going to be zero. So let me pretend that the twos right are the final values so this whole term goes out the window. All right. And what else can we simplify? Well, remember, I have to pick a coordinate system somewhere. So either I start my coordinate system in terms of my height at the initial point or I start at the final point. It's going to be easiest to start, it, I believe, at the initial point because we'll deal with positive heights. OK, so now what I realize is that the initial height then, if that's the case, is going to be zero. So I can cancel that on out. So notice Bernoulli's equation simplifies now to something very straightforward. It's going to be one half times the density of the fluid, which is oil, times then the initial velocity squared, because that's the one, will equal then the density of that oil multiplied by gravity multiplied by the height that that oil obtains in the final state. So notice some other things I can cancel now, right? The densities, who cares what they are? And that should make sense, right? I mean, when we were dealing with free fall problems, did we ever take into account masses or anything like that? No, right? So the densities can basically go out the window. And now, uh, in terms of simplifying this, I'm going to solve this for V, all right? So if I solve this now for V, let's say I get VI is equal to, it'll be 2G times the final height, right? And now what I can do is take the square root of both sides, and now I have my equation for the initial velocity, all right? So here it is. So I know that the velocity, now where is this initial? Well, it's just at the point in which the oil is leaving the tube, okay? This would be the velocity of the oil coming out of that tube then, all right? Uh, now, this is the height. Uh, maybe I should quantify this because, or qualify it because we have two types of heights. So this is the height in the air, 
Okay, I'll, I'll, this is the height final of the air, okay? All right, so now that that's the case, I have this nice formula, and now I'm thinking, well, all right, so now I gotta somehow find pressure at the bottom here. I know that, I know there's a certain flow rate. We're talking about radius. We've got a certain height to the tube. I mean, right, we've got a certain velocity. What the heck's going on? So we gotta think about one equation to use on the, on the right-hand side, guys. So I think this one would be the best one to use at this particular point, okay? Now, how did I, how do I, you know, come to that conclusion? Well, A, it's through a lot of practice, right, and experience, but also B, I, I, I kind of understand that they told me that I have to take into account the resistance of flow through the tube. So I know this formula takes into account that resistance, okay? Now, if I write this formula, so let's write the formula out, all right? So we have Q is equal to, the pressure differential, so P2 minus P1 uh, times pi multiplied by R to the fourth divided now by eight times the uh, eight times the uh, viscosity of the fluid times the length of the tube. All right. Okay. So now I realize. So I'm trying to think to myself. I'm this velocity probably has to be incorporated into here somehow. What variable is it related to out of these? Well, oh, it's related to the flow rate. So what I can now do is take this equation, essentially the area multiplied by that velocity, okay? And now what I can do is substitute that on into my Q, okay? So now let's take a look at that. So here we now, here we now go. So it's going to be the area multiplied by the velocity will then equal now P2 minus P1, all right, times pi multiplied by R to the fourth, divided by eight times the viscosity times the length of the tube. Okay, now one other thing is that we have to find the gauge pressure down here, all right? So what that means is that I don't want to include atmospheric pressure in my calculation, okay? So if I don't want to include atmospheric pressure, and I want to find the pressure here at the bottom. Let's call this P2. It doesn't matter if you call it P1 or P2, just choose. All right, I'm going to call it P2. If I want to find the gauge pressure here, and I'm using this formula, I then can state that just at the point of which the oil is leaving the tube, the pressure over here, P1, is equal to zero. All right, now you might say, well, no, 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 Andrew, it's not equal to zero, it's equal to atmospheric pressure. And yes, you are actually right, that's the absolute pressure value. It's atmospheric pressure right here as it leaves the tube. But remember, they wanted me to calculate gauge pressure, which doesn't take into account the atmospheric pressure. So basically what I can do is simplify this and say that my pressure at point one up here is going to be zero. Now what that does is that just allows me to simplify this a little bit, right? So I can cancel out that P1. And now what I'm also going to think about doing is possibly bringing this now, just all in one thing, bringing this on into the velocity, okay? Also, at the same time, maybe what I'll start doing is I'll start expanding on the area too, okay? Now remember, it's the area of what? It's the cross-sectional area of the pipe over there. So expanding on this. So the area is going to be pi times the radius of the tube squared multiplied now by this velocity of 2 times g times the final height obtained while it was in the air. Okay, move this over a little bit. And that's then going to be equal to now P2 times pi r to the fourth all over eight eta times the length. Now I wanna solve this thing for P2, okay? So all I have to do now, this is very simple. Bring this stuff out of the denominator and into the numerator up here. Okay, great. Bring this stuff out of the numerator on the right and bring it down into the denominator on the left and then just put your little division sign. There you go. We took care of that now. All right, so let's get rid of this. And there and this is the this is it for P2. I'm just going to bring it center it a little better. Okay? This is the formula. Now we notice some things we can cancel. Well, hold on. This is let me let me make one adjustment. When I say this this P2 and this P2 are the same, I'm not really saying that at the moment, okay? I know I wrote down the same subscripts, but the one thing I have to, what, what I really should say here is that P2 will be the gauge pressure that would be formed or I should say calculated uh, due to the flow that's in this tube. OK, 
Okay, so let me say this, that the gauge pressure at point two there will be equal to the gauge pressure due to the flow plus the gauge pressure due to the weight of the fluid. Okay, so really I should, I should quantifying it a little better, that's really more appropriate to say. And then this would be more appropriately qualified as saying that this is the gauge pressure of the flow in the tube. Okay, so let me just make that slight adjustment just because I'm just looking at it and we might start thinking that they're equivalent. Uh, they're not exactly, okay? Uh, so this is gauge pressure of the flowing fluid. Okay, so now, because remember that's also what they told us in the problem, that we have to take the resistance into account here and additionally the weight of the fluid in the tube, okay? Now I can make some simplifications. Pi goes bye-bye, R squared goes bye-bye, that reduced down to a two. And now we have everything in the formula, all right? We know everything right now. We know eight, right? That's the easiest part. We also know the viscosity, it told us one. We know the length of the tube. This is essentially the height, right? If you look, what's the length of this tube? It's just equal to the height here, 50, okay? We also know these variables as we stated before, and we do know the radius of the tube. All right, so now we're good. We found this part, P sub G F, meaning we found the gauge pressure due to the fluid flow. Leave that alone for right now. I'm gonna put it in a box. The next thing to investigate is then, and this part is easier, is to investigate what would be the gauge pressure due to the weight of this particular column of fluid. Well, the gauge pressure is just equal to, if you think back to the prior chapter, the gauge pressure will just be equal to, and remember, I'm not taking into account the atmospheric weight above it, okay? I'm just taking into account, that's the whole idea about gauge pressure. I'm just taking into account the weight of this fluid, not including atmospheric pressure. So the gauge pressure for the weight of the fluid would be equal to now the height of the fluid, right? Multiplied by the density of that fluid multiplied by gravity. This is an equation from chapter 11. So here we have the gauge pressure of the weight of the fluid will be equal to its height. And they told us, actually, well, let me, let me not calculate this yet. Let me leave it all alone, all right? Because I'll put it in one uh, equation at the end. So this is the height of the tube, all right? This is the density of the oil, and that's good. So now, basically, what I realize is that looking at this equation overall, all right, I am now going to take both of these things and then add them together, okay? So I basically have that the Total gauge pressure at point two will be equal to this mess. So it's eight times the uh, viscosity times the height. I'll just call this the height of the tube now, okay? Because that's the same as the length. Multiplied then by the square root of two times gravity times the height that it obtained in the air. All divided now by, all divided now by R squared plus this piece, right? The height of the tube times the density of the oil, times then G. Now all we have to do is plug in all of our values, okay? Since I'm running out of space, I'm going, not gonna write them in, I'm just gonna plug them into the calculator, I'll state them, um, and this would then be the gauge pressure, all right? So basically what we're doing here is this. Eight times the viscosity is gonna be one, times the height of the tube was 50, times then the square root of two times gravity, 9.8 times, the height that it obtained uh, in the air, which was 25. That will then be divided by now the radius of the tube. Notice that they gave us the diameter of 0.1. So you take 0.1 divided by two to get the radius. So now there's gonna be 0.05 raised to the two. Get that answer. Then you're going to add to that now the height of the tube, 50, times the density of the oil, which they told us was 900, then multiply that by gravity, and voila. So the gauge pressure down there will read 3.98, 3.98 times 10 raised to the three, four, five, six. And this is in terms of Pascals, all right? So that's the answer, guys. So in just thinking about this, what might have been even better is to first start with this idea. Should have probably done that. Okay, where you want to take a look at this problem and you want to say to yourself, all right, well, what's the gauge pressure down here going to be a function of? The gauge pressure down here will be a function of the weight of this fluid bearing down on that point 
and it will also be a function of the resistive forces that also are included in there, okay? Um, and it's essentially also a function of the height that this obtains, right? I mean, if you think if there's a really low pressure in here, kind of just, right, just bubbles on, whatever that sound is, it just bubbles on out. But the higher the pressure is here, the higher it's going to reach, okay? So that being the case, it's really, there's really three things that this is a function of, right? It's the resistance of the tube, it's going to be then the weight of the fluid in here, and then it's also going to be uh, the height that the fluid obtains. And those were the three main pieces. This thing dealt with the height, uh, this piece dealt with the resistance, and then this piece dealt with the weight. Those are the three parts, all right? Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please remember to help us out and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.